Hey everyone, uh, thanks for listening to us today. Uh, I'm Thomas, leading growth at Squads, and today I, uh, Valentine, and Vova are going to talk uh, you about account abstraction on Solana uh, and how we make it easier with uh, Squads protocol and all the products we've built around it. So uh, Valentine is going to start talking uh, about uh, the basics of account abstractions on Solana and how it natively supports it uh, with this um, account architecture. Then I'm going to talk about uh, Squats protocol, um, how we make easier for developers to leverage account abstraction on Solana and, and enable much more use cases for uh, dApps and uh, any applications uh, built on Solana. And lastly, Vova is going to talk to you about um, Fuse, the first uh, smart wallet on Solana, uh, how it leverages Squats protocol and all the features uh, it's um, possible thanks to account abstraction on Solana. So now I'm going to let uh, Valentine uh, present you the basics of account abstractions. Yeah, hey guys. Thanks, Thomas, for the introduction. Um, so yeah, I'm Valentin. I'm leading growth. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm leading integrations here at uh, Squads. And um, I'm going to give you a quick overview on how uh, account abstraction on Solana works. Um, how it works technically, so I, I'm going to do a very uh, small um, uh, talk on, on, on the technical side and also talk about how it's supported on Solana since the inception on the network. So account abstraction is a very, diff uh, sim it's a very complicated uh, wording. Um, many guys don't know uh, what it is. So to explain it, I think it's cool to gives you guys a little comparison between wallets that you guys are used to today and account abstracted wallets. So a, a wallet that you guys are used to today, um, like for example on your phone or as an extension in your browser, um, consists of just a key pair. So it's a private key and a public key. And um, this private key has a seed phrase that you guys know. It's 12 or 24 words. Um, and it, it's a single point of failure. So if you guys lose or um, you, uh, use your, your seed phrase or it gets compromised, uh, you basically lost um, your funds or you can lose your funds. So an account abstracted wallet can essentially enables you to have cu custom additional security uh, on, top of, um, on top of your wallet. This is thanks to programs on Solana. So it's uh, called also um, smart contracts on Ethereum. And this program will decide who can access funds or execute transactions, how to access funds and execute transactions, and also set uh, custom security measures uh, for that access of funds. Um, a, a cool example that I like to give uh, in that case are spending limits. Um, if you for example, don't want to spend more than 100 bucks per day, you could set a spending limit uh, in your smart wallet to 100 USDC per day. So talking about smart wallets, um, we have a quick overview here um, uh, behind me. A smart wallet or a smart account is just owned by a program, um, by a smart contract, and it can perform any custom logic that, uh, that a developer wants. So this enables, like I said before, um, things like spending limits, also shared pockets. And what I find really cool is that you can't do that with uh, traditional wallets like the one you, you probably have on your phone right now, because you don't want to trust your friends or family members. Some do, but uh, not everyone would, would like to um, with your seed phrase. Let's uh, get to the customization aspect for developers and how they can design their own uh, account st uh, structures. Um, so yeah, they, they can set custom schemes for additional security for uh, smart wallets. And um, the key products and features that you can build on top of account abstraction is uh, our multi-sigs. Uh, we at Squads are the leading multi-sig platform on Solana. Um, they have social recovery, so let's say you have a seed phrase, but you also want to have a social recovery with your Google account, for example, in case one day you lose your seed phrase um, and you'll be able to access your funds using your Google account again. So 
Um, and then the, thir the third uh, point that we have here, there's many more, of course, um, is two-factor authentication, it, and it's very similar to how um, social recovery works. Let's get to, into a uh, quick technical aspect, and um, also I'm going to show you how um, Solana supports ab account abstraction since the inception of the network, which I find really, really cool. So here we have a, um, a smart, uh, smart wallet that's owned by a user, so the user has um, a, thousand, uh, a thousand USDC in their smart wallet, and he wants to send 500 of those USDC out to another user. In this case, it's Stepan.so. He's going to call our custom program, um, account uh, program that will power account abstraction, um, with these instruction parameters. I want to send 500 USDC, etc. Um, this custom program owns a PDA. It's a program-derived address. Um, essentially, it's the program that owns an account, and uh, this program will be the only one that can make changes or uh, even delete that account. Um, so you, you can see that the transfer authority in that uh, smart account is the user, uh, which is a public key, and the spending limit is 1,000 USDC per day. The smart account balances are 1,000 USDC and two sol. Now, um, the custom program logic uh, that I or um, another dev will, uh, has written for that flow uh, is that there will be some checks. In this case, it will check if the signer's public key, so if the one that is um, interacting with our smart, uh, smart contract is really the one that owns the smart account. So that's me in this case. I own the smart account, so it's good. The checks are passing, and then if the send amount is um, uh, if the send amount is bigger than the spending limit, it will return an error because we don't want to spend more than the spending limit daily. Um, this then is going to be make uh, is going to make a CPI to the token program. So on, on Solana, there's this thing called cross program invocations where you interact with another program from your own program. It will create a cross program invocation to send 500 USDC from the smart wallet. The smart account is going to sign this cross-program invocation, and it's going to send it to uh, Stepan.sol, which is the wallet we wanted it to send to in that case. Um, so yeah, that's all from me, and uh, I'll leave it up to Thomas again. Thanks, Valentine. So as we've seen, um, Solana um, natively enable account abstractions to, um, to work and um, through PDAs, and to make it uh, even better for developers to leverage uh, the, these features enabled by account abstractions, we've built Squad's protocol. Uh, which uh, enable a much better experience for developers. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about Squats Protocol, what is it exactly, and how uh, it looks like. Um, so Squats Protocol, uh, you can see Squats Protocol as the base layer uh, where other projects and uh, programs can be built on top of it. So the most uh, known program so far is V3. Which, is, which we call now Squad's Legacy. It was the first uh, multi-sig formally verified on Solana, and uh, it has been used by all the biggest uh, teams and organizations. It helps secure over 600 million in value, uh, and it's immutable also. Then we recently built uh, V4, which is a new multi-sig program um, for Solana, which goes way beyond uh, what V3 enables. And this is um, where Squad, the new app, is built on. Uh, Squad X, or multi-sig extension wallet, which allows you to connect your multi-sig to the Solana ecosystem, uh, and Fuse. Uh, and then we have the module program, which uh, goes beyond uh, the uh, 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 simple features of uh, multi-sig uh, and enables you to really create, uh, uh, to set up your rules, uh, to customize, really, uh, your multi-sig setup. Um, and th this is where uh, the transactions authorization, authorization policy um, uh, enter the picture, and it will really allow you to uh, create all, um, any kind of setup you want uh, on chain around multi sig security. Um, and finally, Squad's protocols uh, uh, really allow you to deploy easily PDAs on Solana. We call them SPDA for Squad's protocol. Uh, and you can more easily uh, leverage uh, all the account abstractions features that uh, Val uh, presented to you. And uh, in terms of security, when you use uh, Squats protocols, you, your project, your app, um, 
uh, inherit all the security uh, measures we've taken. So uh, Squad Protocol has been audited by AutoSec, Neodyme, uh, Trail of Bits, uh, and Certora, and also formally verified two times, uh, so by AutoSec uh, and Certora. Um, in terms of what you can build with uh, Squats protocols, what are the main applications, uh, we've categorized uh, several uh, use cases. So the first one, the most known, is multisig. So this is what Squad is. Uh, it's also leveraged by other uh, teams, projects on Solana like PIS that use it for uh, their govern governance. Uh, and uh, it basically allows teams, organizations, uh, to manage their assets collectively uh, on chain. Um, but there's other uh, use cases that we're starting to see um, coming up. So, the, uh, for instance, for DeFi protocols, uh, they can uh, build on top of um, Squats protocol and enable the same features, the same experience as what you can find on uh, centralized exchanges, fintech apps, enable um, new uh, security features like 2FA, spending limits, uh, things that you are already familiar with but that are yet not um, uh, really popular in, in, uh, uh, on-chain. Uh, same for wallets. Uh, you can, uh, they can also uh, enable things like sub-accounts, enable people to share accounts to really uh, match the, um, uh, the features you can see with neobanks, uh, with all those uh, solutions, but with the benefits of uh, blockchain technology, such as self-custody um, uh, and more. And lastly, uh, we also have uh, uh, what we call techno-optimist use cases, uh, where we think that uh, this is just the beginning and that account abstraction on Solana powered by Squats protocol uh, will, en en will enable to really compete against centralized uh, products and offer a much better experience and uh, also better security for end users. Um, and now I'm going to... Uh, uh, introduce um, what uh, also we've been working on uh, recently uh, for uh, mobile users and uh, how it basically showcases what is possible uh, to, to, to create with Squats protocol on Solana. So this is Fuse. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Vova and I'm the lead product engineer for Fuse. Uh, Fuse is a uh, mobile first PDA based wallet built on top of Squads protocol. Uh, for each Fuse wallet, we have a squad deployed with uh, three keys and the two out of three threshold. The first key is uh, always kept on your device and is secured with your biometrics. Uh, the second one is stored in your iCloud, and the third one is used for recovery. And that one can be your ledger, your phantom, uh, a custodian wallet like a 2FA provided uh, wallet or whatever. Um, We're building Fuse primarily for uh, retail users who, who are seeking uh, an alternative for cold storage um, when it comes to keeping their Solana assets. Uh, but they also want more recoverability for their self-custody uh, uh, self setup. So uh, uh, basically, Fuse is made possible uh, by the latest uh, features of uh, uh, the latest version of Squads protocol, V4, and some of its uh, new features, which are like, for example, we use uh, the V4 permissions to uh, make sure that we uh, that the recovery key, uh, for example, only has the bare minimum of permissions uh, necessary for it to function. Like, this key is normally going to be managed not by you, or maybe by you, but it can be managed by a third party. So that's why it's important to make sure that it can only vote on new transactions, but not, cannot create new ones or execute ones. 
Uh, then also we're uh, leveraging spending limits feature uh, for uh, the Fury layer feature specifically uh, of the wallet. Uh, the Fury layer uh, like makes your experience way smoother by uh, you know re uh, removing the uh, need in any of the three keys to have any soul on it. Like so, basically all of the fees. Uh, rent, rental fees and transaction fees will be covered by your smart wallet account, the main one. Um, and this is what Spending Limit allows to, to implement. Um, uh, okay, so basically, uh, let me explain real quick how it works, right? So, as I mentioned, we have three keys, and we only need two signatures to sign to do like any wallet action. Uh, normally, two out of three are always on your device. Your device key, and you always, almost always have uh, access to your iCloud key if the internet is there. So you can send any funds, for example, by just signing that transaction with uh, the device and your cloud key. But like, why do we believe that use is a better, has a better story for uh, recovery? Uh, it's because now you can lose one of any one of the three keys and still be able to get access to your funds. Let's imagine you lost, like, the most obvious one is you changing your iPhone. You cannot migrate your device key to the new one, because, like, it's uh, guarded behind your biometrics. And as you know, might know that, you know, on iOS, you cannot just migrate your biometrics. You have to, like, reset up everything from scratch. So essentially, you need to, like, create a transaction that will remove your old phone key and onboard the new one. And you can still do that with the, the other two keys, right? With your iCloud key and the recovery key. Another example would be you losing your access, uh, access to your iCloud account. Uh, in that case, again, you have the other two ones, most likely, your device key and recovery key. You can still restore access. And obviously, like, uh, swapping a recovery key is trivial because like, you already have the other two keys on your device. Why we believe it's more safe than just using a regular uh, software wallet or even like a ledger? Uh, potentially for daily interactions, is because it is way harder to lose access, well, basically to steal two keys rather than one. Like, as I mentioned, the first one is like basically it's isolated completely by the operating system and like access to it is like guarded by iOS. So it's like almost impossible to uh, steal that one. Uh, the iCloud key is also like secured uh, with end to end en encryption and the rest of the stuff, but Let's imagine people get access to their iCloud key. They still cannot do anything because they need like any of the second keys, uh, like uh, of the other two. And obviously, like same goes about uh, the recovery key. Yeah. So this is basically what we have for for you uh, today. We're starting uh, with uh, with Fuse. We're starting with iOS, and later rolling it out to Android and Saga. Uh, Fuse is currently in test flight, uh, with a public release slated for early next year. Uh, we feel like uh, this product is, uh, takes us much closer to, to the world uh, with uh, self-custody, where self-custody is becoming manageable and like, easy to use. Um, thank you for attending our presentation. I hope you enjoyed that, and see you next year at Breakpoint. <laughs>